Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Quick Heal Technologies Limited Q3 FY24 Earnings Conference Call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode. And there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now want the conference over to Ms. Purwangi Jain from Valorum Advisors. Thank you and over to you, ma'am. Good evening, everyone, and a warm welcome to you all. My name is Purvangi Jain from Valorum Advisors. We represent the investor relations of Quickly Technologies Limited. On behalf of the company, I would like to thank you all for participating in the company's earnings call for the third quarter of the financial year 2024. Before we begin, a quick cautionary statement. Some of the statements made in today's earnings conference call may be forward-looking in nature. Such forward-looking statements are subject to risk and uncertainties, which could cause actual results to differ from those anticipated. Such statements are based on management's beliefs, as well as assumptions made by, and information currently available to the management. Audiences are cautioned not to place any undue reliance on these forward-looking statements in making any investment decisions. The purpose of today's conference call is purely to educate and bring awareness about the company's fundamental business and financial quarter under review. I would like to introduce you to the management participating with us in today's earnings call and hand it over to them for their opening remarks. We have with us Mr. Vishal Salvi, Chief Executive Officer, and Mr. Ankit Maheshwari, Chief Financial Officer. Without any further delay, I request Mr. Vishal Salvi to give his opening remarks. Thank you and over to you, sir. Hey, thank you so much, Purwangi, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Vishal Salvi here, CEO of Quickheal Technologies, and welcome to our Q3 FY24 earnings call. In the ever-evolving threat landscape of cybersecurity, driven by the constant technological innovation, unprecedented digital adoption, and rapidly expanding attack surface, cybersecurity has become a very mainstream business problem today. As India's pioneering cybersecurity company with three decades of deep understanding and expertise in managing the global threat landscape, we see it as a responsibility to help solve this complex problem. Staying true to our core purpose, we are focused on innovating to simplify and secure the digital experience for individuals, businesses, and government organizations. We are pleased to report another quarter of strong performance of consistent profitable growth. Our business mix continues to improve and evolve, and as we pivot gradually to holistic cybersecurity player. As the only Indian full-stack cybersecurity alternative, we are witnessing steady demand for our products across both consumer and enterprise segments. In the past six months that I have come on board, we have been able to define our strategy, our go-to-market, realignment of our sales organization structure, and hiring of key senior talent from the industry. During this period, I had the opportunity to spend time with our teams across the country, and I'm extremely pleased with the depth and the quality of the talent that we have in our organization and our leadership. This is giving me immense confidence as we embark on our aspirations to be a true to our purpose. We continue to be heavily focused on our R&D and our product management. And as we look ahead, we remain committed to enhance our product portfolio, expand our market reach, and create a lasting value for all our stakeholders. As you already know, we recently launched Quick Heal version 24 with many innovative features and I'm proud to state that Quick Heal version 24 became the first Indian cybersecurity product to be certified by AB Lab Cybersecurity Foundation Poland, offering for safest browsing and banking experience. We also scored 100% across the categories of testing, 
and perform far better against some of the leading global products in that list of technologies which were there. Speaking of enterprise side, in an age where organizations globally are looking to consolidate security vendors, our solutions from Securite are aligned with cybersecurity mesh architecture, making it the only Indian player to offer integrated, modular, scalable, sentient, and easy to deploy and operate solutions. We are strengthening our enterprise engagement by forging new partnerships with global system integrators, some of the leading consulting firms, national distributors, and value-added resellers. We continue to focus on our brand building, and hence throughout this quarter, we actively participated in major cybersecurity events with industry bodies such as DSCI, All India Security Conference, Cocoon, ISNG, and Economic Times, CISO Data Protection and Privacy Summit. Our momentum remains strong, poised for growth in mid and large enterprise segments with 59 client, new clients for the new products in Q3 alone. I'm extremely proud to state that we have unveiled our first Indian cyber threat report in collaboration with the Data Security Council of India in December 2023. The report is backed by deep insights from our Securite labs and offers actionable insights to help Indian businesses of all sizes to understand the trends, their adversaries, their modus operandi, so as to help all enterprises build a robust, secure infrastructure. I'm deeply excited to share that we have recently signed an MOU with IIM Nagpur for joint cybersecurity research to help identify newer ways of finding solutions to address the new age cybersecurity threat. We remain confident that this partnership will create an immense value for the Indian digital ecosystem, be it governments or enterprises. During the past quarter, we have further fortified our organizational leadership with new talent onboarding, including our chief product officer and our head of delivery, adding total 45 years of collective cybersecurity experience from the large global organizations. We continue to focus on strengthening our leadership by hiring more senior talent from the industry. To conclude, we are well poised to seize the opportunity that the industry presents, have an extremely passionate team hungry to create value, and deeply focused on consistent and profitable growth. I would like to now invite my colleague Ankit Maheshwari, CFO, to walk you through the financials in details. Thank you, Vishal, and good evening, everyone. Talking about numbers, the consolidated revenue for the quarter is stood at rupees 82 crores, which grew by 5% on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis and 23% on a year-on-year -year basis. Our consumer business has started to steadily gain momentum and get back on track. As Vishal mentioned, we have onboarded 59 enterprise clients for our new products in Q3 FY24. Our newly introduced products are gaining market traction, instilling us with confidence. We are excited by the 5% revenue growth in this quarter, as Q3 traditionally has been a sluggish quarter for us in the past years, with an average drop of about 25% over Q2 revenue. Our total expenditure grew by 4% on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis and stands at about 70 crores. The increase in the expense is mostly on account of the increments rolled out to the employees during the quarter. This was effective October only. EBITDA for the quarter stood at 14%, amounting to rupees 12 crore, while PET stood at 12%, amounting to rupees 10 crore. We will continue to focus on investments towards people and technology, while at the same time be prudent about cost management, aligning with our commitment towards profitable growth. Our balance sheet is strong with a cash and cash equivalent of more than 195 crore, and we are a zero debt company. In this quarter itself, we have added about 
13 crores into our treasury. It is also a pleasure to share that our CSR responsibility initiative has crossed a milestone of impacting 50 lakh lives in Q2. In Q3, we covered six states with 1,000 plus volunteers impacting over 7 lakh lives. With this, I would like to open the call for question and answer session. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself in the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants requested the youth handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We take the first question from the line of Mihir Manohar from Carnelian AMC. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, uh, thanks for giving the opportunity. Uh, sir, congratulations on a good set of numbers uh, in the second straight quarter of profit after the three quarter of losses uh, that we had. Uh, sir, largely wanted to understand on the uh, tie ups part. I mean, at the start of your comment, uh, you mentioned some of the consulting companies uh, are also looking forward. Uh, if you can throw some more light over there, uh, that will be helpful. Uh, a second area was on the enterprise side, you know, just wanted to understand, uh, have we identified any areas, let's say BSSI or retail, uh, which will be targeted areas for the enterprise uh, where we are looking for growth? Uh, and the third question was on the DPDP Act and, you know, uh, how is the situation over there uh, and what traction uh, are we getting over there? Hey, thank you so much, Mihir, uh, for your compliments and uh, I think your questions uh, are good. Uh, see, the first one about the tie-ups, right? So, as I mentioned in my initial commentary, you know, we are actually uh, having that as a very important part of our strategy. And uh, over there, what we are trying to do is to, you know, replicate uh, whatever we have done in our B2C or the consumer business uh, into enterprise and all the learning. Uh, so we are uh, talking to, uh, you know, consulting firms, talking to global uh, system integrators, uh, talking to national distributors and value-added retailers. And uh, there is already a, a good uh, pipeline of conversations uh, that we are doing, and they are also, uh, you know, interested in taking us to some of their customers. So, uh, already a, a pipeline has uh, got generated. At the same time, these are still very initial days of our strategy being unfolded. So, uh, what we have also done is uh, realigned our sales organization to have a dedicated senior leader in our organization to just focus on alliance business. Uh, and also we have strengthened that team by getting more people under him uh, to drive uh, that focus. So uh, extremely happy with what we have done so far uh, and also focused on, you know, making sure that we have the right people uh, and dedicated, um, you know, on, on that agenda. And, uh, and like, you know, so, so what we will do is as and when we start uh, closing and start making um, closure of deals as well as signing the MSAs, we will start reporting those in our subsequent quarters. So that is really where we are on, as far as that is concerned. On the approach on focusing on different businesses, I see traditionally, you know, uh, we, we are right now looking at, you know, focusing on our SMB and the mid-market business. We have already had a, a very strong run as far as the enterprise business is concerned on the SMB segment. We believe and we are one of the top leaders in that segment already now. Uh, now, you know, the, the way we look at that particular segment is about looking at in this, all the industries, you know, whether you're talking about uh, hospitality, we talk about um, healthcare, you talk about manufacturing, you talk about BFSI. All of these are, um, you know, very important segments for us, uh, as well as, you know, looking at also government. And so we are uh, we having a good mix for, of our existing book of business from all of these industries. Uh, but I think, you know, if I have to look at purely from a cybersecurity point of view, you know, the, the healthcare industry and the manufacturing industries 
or those which are not that well regulated are the ones who are uh, having a more bigger focus and investments in cyber security because traditionally they have not been uh, investing in security and they are also the ones where there is a lot more work to be done and so uh, from our bias point of view we tend to then you know try and you know create uh, our razor sharp focus on these areas because they need the maximum help uh, from from uh, solutions like us. So that's really how we are looking at from a from a market and from a uh, you know industry's point of view. As far as the DPDP is concerned, uh, you know we are obviously waiting for uh, the final enforcements coming from the government. Uh, we are closely watching that. Uh, we have to wait and see whether it will happen before the elections are announced or it happens closely after that. Either ways, I think it is inevitable and it is expected to come uh, very soon. And we are already seeing um, a significant traction of uh, multiple POCs which have already uh, been initiated for our solutions in data protection. Um, and so uh, I think we are very buoyant about you know the outlook that that is going to get generated from because of the DPDP. And also, I think it's good for the country because it is going to overall shape uh, and improve the overall cybersecurity and privacy awareness as well as infrastructure within the within the country. Yeah. Sure, sure. Uh, just to extend to the earlier ones, you mentioned that there are some good pipeline of conversations. Oh, sorry, uh, sir. Uh, Mr. Manohar, we are unable to hear you clearly. Yeah, am I audible now? Yes, sir. Please proceed. Yeah, sure. Uh, sir, you mentioned there are some good pipeline of conversations which are happening uh, along with some of the consulting firms. I mean, among the pipeline, is there any company with revenue of more than $5 billion or any company with uh, total employee size of 5,000? Yeah, I think, see, uh, some of the companies that we are talking about are having a very large enterprise uh, and large businesses. Uh, I will not be able to right now disclose with you exactly how many are in that category. But, uh, you know, as you would imagine, you know, typically a big four would be talking to large enterprises, right? So we are talking about... Uh, you know, talking to companies in large enterprises and not only mid-market and SMBs in this space, yeah. Because I think DPDP uh, obviously is, uh, you know, one area where the country and the companies across the, you know, country would require, uh, you know, compliance, right? Because this is sometimes, you know, this is the first time that a privacy law is going to come in the country. So I think the interest is coming from all sides. Sure, sir, sure. That's really helpful. And just one last question uh, on this uh, AV side. Mr. Manohar, uh, may we request yeah, that you return yeah, yeah, to the yeah, question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll move on to the next question. That is from the line of Hardik Agarwal from Param Capital. Please go ahead. Um, hi, sir. Congratulations uh, for a great set of numbers. Uh, very nice to meet you over call. Um, sir, uh, just uh, uh, you know, a couple of questions on my side. Uh, so if I was to look at, um, you know, the performance, uh, the numbers of the company in March 2014, for instance, versus now, uh, I imagine the number of digital assets uh, have grown substantially, uh, but would love to understand, you know, what maybe uh, might have caused the growth of the company to not be as strong during this period. And similarly, over the next three to five years, where you envision growth to happen? I know previously you had shared there was a shift towards uh, a strategy towards uh, for enterprise focus versus consumer. Maybe if you can elaborate a bit on that as well, that'd be great. Hey, thank you so much, Hardik, uh, for your compliments. And uh, see, let me state here that uh, the company has been investing significantly on multiple digital assets for almost now six to seven years, right? Our enterprise business is now around seven to eight years old. And as a result of that, we have acquired a significant set of enterprise customers in the SMB and the mid-market space, right? Through our early uh, adoption of those digital assets. And now, as you rightly said, we have uh, beyond the endpoint security, we have branched into extended detection and response, managed detection and response, uh, zero trust, uh, you know, user access, uh, and then looking at, you know, uh, additional new technologies for data protection, uh, mobility security and so on and so forth. So what we are trying, what we have been building for the last so many years is diversifying our portfolio and transforming into a full stack cyber security uh, product solution provider from India. And uh, and so, you know, a lot of these, as you can imagine, are solutions which take a lot, of, you know, a significant amount of time to mature in the market. Uh, but 
you know we are we are very confident uh, that you know the the strategy is really going to unfold uh, in future to scale the business and that's the reason why we have been investing so far all those investments have translated into you know all of these solutions now being released in the market for some of them is there i mean the eps has been there for more than 8 and a half years uh, but you know the rest have been there uh, you know for last two and a half years or so and so uh, we will start you know but it early days for uh, for these solutions and you know we'll start seeing momentum as we pick pick the business and start uh, you know getting them uh, into mainstream right so uh, so i think our uh, our objective is to remain a a, a full stack cyber security uh, provider just to make sure that we are true to our mission of simplifying security architecture for our customers and so you know the idea is to really be a one stop shop uh, when the customer comes to us and give them a integrated full stack solutions right now uh, i i don't want to comment on you know our past performance because we are really talking about uh, this quarter right now and uh, and i think you know what we are what we are doing is making sure that we remain focused on both the businesses both consumer as well as enterprise business and uh, and trying to you know have execute on our strategy which we have defined very clearly to our teams and i think that is what is helping us to uh, deliver on the consistent uh, you know profitability that we are looking at and uh, you know like i said because these are still early days our scale is you know going to come in future and uh, you know we are sowing the seeds for that right now and and so significant amount of investment uh, from our uh, core technologies are going into the new technologies and that's really how we are executing our strategy uh, as far as the product mix is concerned or business mix is concerned between consumer and enterprise i, I think we had mentioned about the consistent in- increase in our enterprise business uh that is going to happen and i think we'll be sharing that as a kpi for many years now and uh, i'm happy to say that even even this quarter we are reporting a marginal increase in our enterprise business over the consumer business and that is really how we are going to tra- track that kpi because we believe that the future growth for the company is going to come from enterprise wonderful sir thank you thank you The next question is from the line of Abhishek Bhandari from Nomura. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, so I had one question around your, you know, uh, team building. Uh, you know, we saw two senior leadership positions this quarter. Maybe if you could elaborate, you know, what are the positions which are left to be filled, and uh, you know, what's the progress on those? Hey, thank you, Abhishek, for your question. Uh, we are happy to have, uh, you know, Lalit Mohan. Uh, join as a chief product officer he comes with a very strong uh, background from uh, bfsi as well as it uh, services industry uh, and a, a very relevant experience on managing uh, cyber security as well as uh, uh, working on uh, product management uh, having uh, personally having a doctorate in uh, cyber threat intelligence so uh, very happy for lalit to be on board as well as uh, ajit zanzat who is joining us uh, as uh, head of delivery and uh, you know again he comes with uh, solid experience from uh, it services and the product uh, uh, management companies uh, across various uh, uh, in this uh, various sectors so so i think both of them are good additions to our leadership team look i think even earlier i had mentioned this that we are go, going to continually look at uh, adding more talent and more senior leadership talent into our organization uh, to to help us uh, in our aspiration that we have set for ourselves uh, i had also mentioned that we will bolster and strengthen our uh, sales organization our uh, other businesses that are there and uh, and we continue to do that we have already hired um, you know multiple talents in the mid mid leadership uh, areas in in sales organization who are already on board and uh, started uh, you know executing uh, and we will continue to look out for more such opportunities in future uh, so i think uh, you know this is going to be a constant for us uh, abhishek and uh, we will continue to invest in people and talent Uh, as we look at uh, you know positioning our company for future 
got it. Thank you and all the best, sir. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in this conference, we request you to limit your questions to two for participant only. The next question is on the line of Vimal Gohil from Alchemy Capital Management Private Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you for the opportunity and uh, uh, congratulations on a very good quarter, especially on the enterprise front. Uh, so my question is uh, regarding uh, repeat business. So, uh, you know, if you could just help us understand what are the repeat business trends currently and uh, increasing your repeat business, what does it mean for profitability? Uh, the second question is uh, how do we look to sort of uh, scale up the enterprise business from here on? What's the outlook like? Are we uh, and when can we touch, let's say, a 500, uh, 500 crore kind of a top line? Because that's easily uh, achievable given the size of the market itself. And uh, lastly, I just wanted to uh, uh, the question is for uh, the CFO. Uh, the the incentives seem seem to have uh, sort of uh, bumped up this quarter. Uh, what was the reason behind that? Yeah. So these are my three questions. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for your question. See, I think. Uh, any business, right, renewals is a very important part of your strategy, and it's no different for, for us. I think both in the consumer side as well as uh, the enterprise side, uh, we, con we are always constantly focused on uh, our renewals. Um, as you would know and imagine that, you know, the, the enterprise business is much more predictable uh, when it comes to renewals, and uh, I think we are... Uh, on in on par with the industry, we, our renewal rates are somewhere between uh, 65 to 75 percent, and uh, and we are always trying to strive towards increasing that uh, over a period of time. We are we are having a constant focus around that, and see how we can actually have our sustenance business going on. Uh, as far as the retail side is concerned, it's much much more challenging because of the way distributed models. Uh, that we have uh, in in our business model, so uh, so claiming and knowing customers is not always easy, uh, but but I believe we have one of the best um, renewal rates in the market and the industry, and uh, and we continue to have multiple options of automation uh, and various other insights that we use to uh, you know claim as well as renew uh, our customer base as we go along. So both the points are very, very critical and important for us, and we will we remain focused on that. As far as the outlook is concerned, look, we, we don't give guidance, uh, apart from the fact that we have mentioned that we will focus on consistent and profitable growth, and uh, and all, that, all, all of us are really making sure that we will uh, strive towards doing that. And uh, But at the same time, like I mentioned, uh, you can see from the amount of investment that we are doing, a lot of our core business is currently fueling our new business. And that part we will never stop. We will continue to do that uh, because we believe that uh, as we go into the future, a uh, lot of our core business will, will trans transform into uh, the new, new way solution that we are investing in. And so, uh, so the investment will not stop. And that's the reason why you, know, uh, you should look at us from that point of view. Um, you know, that looking at how we are investing for future. Uh, but at the same time, if you look at in terms of the outlook, I think cybersecurity as an industry and as a, as a business problem is very well defined. Uh, digital uh, innovation, digital aspirations of country as well as businesses uh, will need a very strong and robust cybersecurity foundation. Uh, we are the only full-stack cybersecurity alternative for India, uh, and we have a very strong Make in India story. So we are extremely uh, bullish and optimistic about, uh, you know, our prospects in the future, where we not only serve uh, the enterprises, but we will also serve uh, some of the government requirements and, um, you know, aspirations. Uh, on the third question, before I hand it over to Ankit, look, I think, you know, people, people part is a very important part in our strategy and making sure that their engagement levels and their involvement in the organization and participation is very critical. And that's the reason why we have, uh, you know, chosen to uh, give those incentives, and that's the reason why you've seen that impact that Ankit talked about. But Ankit, you want to so, add? Uh, uh, thanks, Vishal. Uh, hi, Vimal. So, Vishal, he was referring to the 
sales incentive okay. or the employee incentive. So, uh, Vimal, it's a combination of demand and supply. Market in the consumer market, there are still headwinds which are there, and competition is very very aggressive, and they have launched many schemes. So, counter those schemes, we have to equally be aggressive, and hence you see that our incentive cost has gone up in this quarter. Uh, but indirectly, this has actually helped us in getting the top line as well. And, and Ankit, this would be more on the enterprise side or the consumer side, the incentive, uh, the 12 crore incentive that has gone, would be more on the enterprise more, side, right? More the retail side, consumer side. Oh. Huh. Understood, understood. Okay. okay. Thank you so much, sir, and uh, all the very best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Dikshan from DB Wealth. Please go ahead. Hi, Vishal. Uh, firstly, congratulations on the new leadership hires that you have done, and congratulations on the six months. Um, really liking the way that uh, you have been guiding us in the last couple of phone calls. Um, I have two questions. One is, uh, uh, what is Paint, paint us a picture, right? Like, who is a ideal client that we are targeting right now? And what kind of, you know, sort of a timeline that we can look at on closing that one client? Any hypothetical client, we uh, do not need to talk about specifics. But, uh, yeah. Hey, thank you so much, Dikshant. Uh, see, I think the uh, ideal client for the current space we are in, uh, I mean, there are two, three different categories, but let me start with the first one, which is a company, think about a company which is around, uh, uh, you know, 1,000 to 5,000 employee organization uh, okay. with a revenue, anything between 100 to 1,000 crores. And, uh, and basically somebody who has not yet really looked at cyber security as a, a major issue, uh, because of perhaps lack of regulation or also because so far they have not really been hit by any cyber security major issues, okay? Mm -hmm. And what this client would perhaps be going through right now is the struggle of why am I now getting worried about ransomware attacks and why some of my computers have got impacted? Why is my neighbor or my fellow uh, competitor got deeply impacted because of a cyber security incident or a breach. And now I need to really worry about it. And now that the Data Protection Act and cyber security requirements are coming big time from even the regulations and government, and with significant penalties if I don't comply, I need to now start suddenly worrying about cyber security. What do I do? Where do I go? Mm -hmm. The big daddies or the big uh, companies do not have a focus, nor this, this type of client can afford, um, you know, the kind of infrastructure or the solutions that they have. And so these are the ones who are typically un unserved, underserved, are the ones whom we, we focus on. And these are the ones who um, typically we find a win-win situation, right, because we have solutions for them. Uh, the typical sales cycle for these type of clients would range between a three months to a six months period. Uh, if the need is well generated and identified, then uh, it typically happens within three months. But if it is something to be seeded and and then managed to the whole life cycle, then it takes anything between uh, four to six months. So that's typically how we look at ourselves. Apart from this, uh, we are also looking at the Make in India government initiatives and looking at, you know, as India is adopting more and more digital, in fact, the India digital stack is now becoming a, uh, a benchmark uh, for the globe. Uh, and as India's digital aspirations grow, government will adopt more and more technology, and that will require cybersecurity. And we have a very strong play there. So I think there also we have a very good opportunity, uh, which, is, which is definitely there. And the third thing which is there is, um, you know, this example of DPDP Act, right, where the motion gets created because of only regulation, and that is across industries, that is across different uh, segments uh, of clients, 
and over there uh, we would be you know because we have a solution which addresses the problem of data discovery and classification we will be able to position ourselves and generate leads and then conversions around that so i mean i've given you three examples uh, there are a few others as well but broadly this is really how i look how we look at our global go to market beautiful um michelle just to follow up on this particular thing um just one more please really request you there i think it's uh, it would be a better flow for all of us yeah sure go ahead uh, thank you so much vishal vishal i see that we onboarded uh, mr uh, lalit uh, for our chief product officer and uh, his uh, profile goes way ahead of uh, like you know the sort of beautiful business that we are creating i just want to double tap on our pms right now um so uh, what just help us with the sort of pms you are looking at let's say apart from the uh, act by the government which will obviously be a catalyst for us what kind of pms are we looking at if you can give us an example with a subsector if it's bfs or a bfsi pms for um another fintech business what kind of uh, businesses are we targeting and what kind of pms we have with it would really be helpful for us so uh, see i think uh, when you look at our go to market right so uh, typically you would find that different there is going to be nuances when you go by industry to industry okay yeah so uh, and then there there are certain things which are common for example when you look at our enterprise uh, endpoint security solution uh, it is a more fundamental core technology that that is required for every possible company that you can think of in fact that's a core technology which is which no company can do without right which will address your problem of anti ransomware anti virus and so on and so forth so that will be across but for example uh we have we have a solution called threat intelligence and when you look at threat intelligence and management and looking at commercial because we are we are um we have the largest repository of malware and uh you know different bad it actors and other things so all of that information we call it indicators of compromise indicators of attack indicators of behavior this is becomes a commercial feed and all of that information is extremely extremely useful for a a bfsi large bank and because we are seeing unique indian signals they would want to use that as a technology to be consumed in their security operation center so when it comes to large banks we would use that particular product or solution as a tip of the spear to go and you know create value for those kind of customers so uh, so there are basically you know these uh, nuanced um, actions that we would have to do by industries and based on that we have given a quota to our sales team as to what is it that we can realistically achieve by each quarter against those solutions and then we go and adopt it another example i can give you is government is investing significantly in um empowering uh, the citizens and you know teaching them and other things and for that they are giving tablets uh, to for financial inclusion and for uh, education and those tablets require a protection uh, so that you know it is you can only do certain activities so we have a solution called mdm mobile device management which is addressing that problem and so we can we can actually and we are engaging with those initiatives of the government where we our solutions can be used uh, to secure those tablets so that's really how we look at our go to market by industries and by specific initiatives i hope that answers your question thank you so much vishal for your generous time that answers more than enough thank you so much vishal wish you the best thank you thank you reminder to the participants anyone wishing to ask a question may please press star and 
The next question is from the line of Fezal Hawa from HG Hawa and Co. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Sir, uh, what is the kind of R&D expenditure that we are targeting? Uh, 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 sir, can you speak a bit louder? Your audio is sounding very soft. Uh, what is the kind of R&D ex expenditure we are targeting for the next financial year? And uh, uh, as you may be knowing, sir, most of the you know hackers, uh, the, 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 the black hat hacker, hackers are actually you know amongst uh, very young people and that all over the globe. So are we doing any kind of hackathons to you know really attract more young talent as ethical hackers and you know to really uh, get more talent which is uh, you know which may not be uh, actually you know. Uh, uh, studying in uh, colleges, but you know most of these, uh, you know, the ethical hackers are, are are more mavericks, you know, who do things on their own. So, uh, any any thoughts on you know hiring these kind of people to or or involving them in uh, you know large platforms like uh, you know just like uh, uh, Buck Crowd is or uh, you know uh, Hacker One is and you know, creating some kind of a ecosystem like that to really you know uh, get a flavor of. Uh, how how things are going? Yeah, I think I I'll try and answer your both the questions. Um, so you know when you look at in terms of the R and D, right? I, like I mentioned, right? Our uh, core is currently fueling the the new, and and that is something which we will double down and continue to do, uh, you know, on an ongoing basis. Uh, we are also constantly looking out for additional areas of. Uh, Horizon 3 kind of uh, innovative ideas on what are the few new things that we would want to do. And if we uh, identify any any new initiative, uh, we have the necessary amount of uh, ability to invest uh, and, and we will always be look out, looking out for those avenues for further investment so that we can continue to uh, you know improve and add uh, more solutions into our bouquet of services which are already there, right? Uh, at the same time, you know, we also, uh, if you look at in terms of the amount of the type of people that we have, uh, you know, they are very deeply core technology people in our malware labs, and the kind of uh, kind of knowledge and uh, uh, you know understanding that they have about uh, advanced malware and research is is phenomenal. Uh, we have also constantly encouraged them to go and participate in the cyber security conferences. So they regularly go and present their papers. We sponsor them to go and go overseas and uh, talk about what they are seeing and what they are doing. We encourage them and constantly uh, you know, go and, and basically talk about new ideas and actually present in academic papers. Right. So that is something which we encourage. We also just concluding our innovation uh, hackathon, which we do every year, where we invite people to participate and come out with new ideas and new uh, initiatives so that uh, they are encouraged to talk about how they can solve the cybersecurity issue and problem. Uh, so, so basically, you know, it takes a village, right, for you to be uh, able to solve this problem. And, and we are, you know, making sure that, uh, you know, we, we will... Uh, constantly uh, encourage our employees to uh, you know be innovative and reward that that those ideas and in fact a lot of the ideas that we have implemented actually come from these ideas coming from our team so in a way we have democratized innovation and not you know do innovation outside of that so i think that in fact the whole uh, genesis of wikil for the last three decades has been that it has been an innovative company and that's the reason why we have been relevant so far and have market leadership in some of the core technologies that we have. We also have, uh, you know, vulnerability disclosure programs, uh, which helps in actually getting our community, uh, external community, to come and participate and share in, inputs to us. Uh, we also participate in, uh, you know, the Nullcon, uh, you know, events which are there, which are basically hackers coming together. So a lot of our teams go there and participate and interact with each other, right? So, so it is a community. It's a closely well knit community, and uh, we are we definitely are uh, in in that, and we continue to participate in that. Yeah. And sir, so once the privacy laws and the various cyber security laws come in, what kind of a total addressable opportunity you see, see in India uh, in dollar terms? That's one. And uh, sir, any chances that we could be a successful company even abroad? You know, uh, at least you know in uh, in third world countries or or in DCs, your MENA region. 
you see i think when it comes to uh, dpdp act right i think some i have actually even talked about it and blogged about it basically we we should not think about dpdp as only a privacy issue okay because um, if you look at a, a a provision like gdpr uh, which came in the euro for privacy it actually helped in improving the overall cyber security infrastructure of the whole ecosystem so privacy requires Uh, upgrade of cyber security so while we do have a solution which addresses the data protection and classification problem we also have a full stack of cyber security solutions which will help you to overall improve and keep yourself upgraded to comply to the dpdp act so for you to be able to comply you not only need to do privacy you also need to do cyber security so from that point of view i think it creates a very good sweet spot for us and it increases our addressable market or rather i would say that it accelerates our growth once the act comes into play and uh, and so i would not like to give a number to it right now but then you know it obviously amplifies uh, and the pot- gives a great potential for us to grow uh, in in that space right so i think that's really how we are looking at what was the second part of your question uh second part is, is, is what chances do we have of you know really being able to do, uh, you know sell our products abroad at least in you know countries which are in gcc or or in you know africa or you know which are not the very developed countries yeah i think we are already selling in africa in uh, in apac uh, but i think you know right now our approach for that has been uh, very tactical and uh, you know we want to as you, as i had mentioned lot of our solutions are new in the market and uh, they are right now just getting well entrenched and you know lot of ucs are in the pipeline and uh, you know already started started seeing traction for example as dna has been procured by many customers now so we want to make sure that we go through that one one or two rounds of maturity and then start you know really making investment for a global footprint so that's really our approach so um, you can anticipate that in in your future we should be looking at a more structured and strategic approach towards our international business thank you so much for answering so well and i really appreciate your help thank you the next question is on the line of mihir manohar from kanyeli nmc please go ahead uh, yeah hi thanks for giving the follow up Uh, sir i just wanted to understand on the uv labs i mean the certification that quickly version 24 uh, got uh, and you also mentioned that the, uh, the, the certification also provides uh, that we are far better against the leading global products uh, so just wanted to understand how is the importance uh, how is the relevance of the certification uh, does it increase our international appeal uh, in the consumer segment uh, so if you can throw some light to understand how to understand the importance of the certification uh, that will be helpful Ladies and gentlemen, the line for the management has got disconnected. Please stay connected while we reconnect the management. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for patience. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for patiently holding. We now have the line for the management reconnected. Over to you, sir. Yeah, I think here you can go ahead now. Uh, yeah, sure, sir, sure. Sir, just wanted to understand on this UV Lab certification. I uh, mean, so you mentioned that we have become the first Indian cyber security company uh, to get the certification, and our product is far better than against the leading global comp- products which are there. Uh, so, just wanted to understand how important is this uh, certification? Uh, how to understand the importance of this? Uh, does it increase our global appeal? Or how to understand this? Here, I think this is a very good question, and. Uh, extremely proud that you know the we are we have there are some seven parameters and all the parameters we click in the uh, tick uh, you know all of those seven uh, there are some top 8 or 10 companies in that list and there are three or four only who have actually scored uh, full marks uh, but there are you know are we going to be publishing this result uh, you know and making it public on our website uh, so th- you know you can have a look at it Uh, but uh, the reason it is significant is because it actually demonstrate our investment in safe banking and the amount of uh, 
features and functionalities that we provide to our quick heal endpoint uh, consumer product where we we give them assurance that when they are actually doing banking they are actually can be uh, safe and secure and uh, and th this test actually addresses that issue because there are basically uh, man in the middle man in the browser attack which are which is what plagues most of the online banking transactions and so uh, our safe banking experience it helps you to address that Sure, sure, sure. This is for the consumer side, right? Yeah, this is for the consumer side. You're right. Understood. Sure. Yeah, that's it for my ticket. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aditya Sen from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Hi. Thank you for the opportunity. Good to see that uh, the retail segment is also recovering now. It's uh, doing good since past two consecutive quarters. Uh, just wanted to understand that uh, will it uh, are we aiming to take it back to the previous highs of roughly 250 to 80 crores of revenue that we used to do in the FY 16 17 era do we have certain plan or is it going to remain in the certain range that uh, the range in which it is now see i think uh, if you see the this business right there the, there are there have been significant headwinds you know for this business for last few years right and and that headwind is all about you know there is been a degrowth in the adoption of paid antivirus uh, across across the globe and also specifically in indian market as well um, in spite of that we have continued to grow and also maintain our leadership position uh, in in the market that we are there so uh, so i would not right now say that those headwinds have disappeared i think those challenge challenges continue uh, there is a lot of misinformation being spread in the market uh, between free as well as paid avis and we are trying to address the issue of awareness in fact in last time last call i had mentioned about uh, the mature market uh, being 50% uh, penetrated as far as paid avis concerned india is still 20% uh, so we uh, we have a challenge of awareness uh in the current consumers uh, we are doing our best to make sure that that awareness grows uh, mm -hmm. and uh, we would like to believe that we would want to go to those levels uh, but we want to take it uh, one step at a time uh, we continue to navigate and come out with various strategies so that we maintain our market leading position and uh, we maintain uh, you know all the innovative ideas that we have been i mean av20 av24 was fast breaking right it came out with so many different features which were first of the kind in the industry and uh, and we will continue to do that right so uh, so like i think the key thing is about trying to be, bring in more predictability and consistency in that business that is really what we are trying to do through our interventions and uh, and at the same time you know try and grow and also create awareness uh, and create a demand for for our solutions all right all right thank you for this and uh, given that the research and development cycle is near to maturing i'm not saying it is completely matured but uh, given that fact uh, should we expect ebitda to start increasing from not now but let's say h2 fi 25 and if yes then uh, in what range should we expect by the end of fi 25 or end of fi 26 yeah unfortunately i'll not be able to give you guidance Uh, specifically on you know the numbers on the range but what i can say is that our trajectory or rate of growth of our r&d expenses will be far far lower as compared to our trajectory or growth of our top line and that's really what our strategy is to increase the gap uh, between the two and if we start doing that uh, then uh, you know we bit will automatically start having a positive trend so that's really how we are looking at it and you know we what you said is right that because of our sustained investment for the past 4 5 years uh, we we do have a steady steady state as far as our development effort is concerned so now we will not we, we should not expect too much of more uh, growth in that space it will it will more steady so any growth which happens in business will actually help you to help in the ebitda all right all right thanks a lot That was my question. Thank you. 
Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, now there are no further questions. I now hand the conference over to the management for their closing comments. Thank you so much, uh, everyone, for great questions. And I hope uh, you you got uh, you know proper uh, address to all the queries that you had, and you have a good understanding of where we stand. Uh, thank you so much for your participation, and wish you a happy Republic Day for tomorrow. Thank you, members of the management team. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Quick Heal Technologies Limited, that concludes this conference. We thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.